Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. Today, new collaborative content with fellow YouTube creator, Farmcraft 101. If you're not familiar with John over at Farmcraft, please go over there and check him out. Let him know that we sent you. He has some of the most interesting and diverse man content on all of the YouTubes, right? This dude does a little bit of everything. He does it to the extreme and today is no exception. He pulled a 1960 John Deere 1010 crawler out of the weeds and he's trying to get this thing back to life. I think he's been pretty close to throwing in the towel and giving up on this thing. He had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with it in one of his recent videos and he's just, he's not giving up. Yeah, I know, I could put the, the 2000 into you, but I'm never gonna get it back. I mean, not the puppy dog eyes. What, you too? Man, everyone's looking at me like this. The pressure. <sighs> this thing is going to come back to life. Area Diesel's gonna help it out along the way. If you caught one of his first videos, he had some injection pump issues. We helped him out with a little bit of hardware, a little bit of advice. He was able to successfully get that thing rebuilt and has just continued down the path of what is broken next. In the most recent episode, uh, you saw that the engine is pretty tired, right? He now has pistons out. He's got worn out piston rings. He's got busted lands on the pistons. He is going after that issue as we speak. We actually sent him a set of rings, a set of glow plugs the other day. So I know he's deep in the bowels of this beast. We got a little project here for us to work on. 1960 John Deere 1010 crawler, 145 cubic inch indirect injected John Deere diesel engine. It's about 2.4 liters for you metric folks. This is the 1010 diesel engine. It's a new power package. Deer designed and precision built. A special turbulence chamber and related parts give you top efficiency through the wide range of working speeds. Pistons are four ring type of aluminum alloy for extra good heat dissipation. On the 1010 diesel engine, the rotor type fuel injection pump shown here in cutaway view assures accurate metering of fuel. We actually found we have the uh 1977 edition of Nebraska tractor test data in the library and this particular machine just for reference has a factory rating of 36 36 horsepower 36 horsepower at 2500 rpm so i'm sure she's a real screamer at 2500 rpm we're talking about a 7000 pound or so machine according to the internet. These dudes were manufactured from 1960 to 1964. So we're talking 60, 64 year old technology here. I believe they manufactured about 16,000 of these crawlers and 7,000 or so were the diesel variant. There was also a gasoline powered version of this machine. The engine is common to the 1010 tractor from the same era of which they manufactured a significantly larger amount, 45,000 or so as per the Googler. The crawler model goes anywhere, anytime, provides sure-footed traction and stability on hillsides, over rough ground, in mud and snow. This machine of John's is the early variation, so there were some changes. I'm sure there were many changes, the changes we're familiar with. This is the earliest design and unfortunately the least popular version of injector they put in these machines. As best I can tell, this injector was only ever found in the 1010 diesel crawler and diesel tractor. I don't believe any other applications ever use this specific injector and that's going to fight us because part availability is an issue to say the least. Parts, or really there's only one part to this injector. It has literally been obsolete longer than I've been alive. We're not going to be able to uh, lean on the warehouse for some new hardware to whip these back into shape. This is probably the most simple diesel fuel injector that you're going to see. This is out of a pre-combustion engine. This is not injecting directly into the combustion chamber. 
it directly injects into a pre-combustion chamber. We kind of call them dumper. It's a dumper nozzle. The nozzle retaining nut screws off of the body and this thing has zero moving parts. It's a clean shot through. The line from the injection pump screws on and that's it. There is no return connection. There is no valves. There is no metering, no springs, no shims. That is just a uh, injector body. Traditional nozzles, when fuel is injected to them, it actually operates on the far end of the nozzle and it lifts a pintle up out of a seat and that's what injects fuel into the cylinder. These are forward protruding nozzles and it's just a simple check valve. There's a pintle that comes in from the forward facing side, a spring and a seat that hooks over the back of the pintle and that's it. It's a one-way check valve of sort. No real orifice for spraying, no spray pattern per se. Uh, we just call them dumpers and that's about all they do. Primary concern or issue or thing to look at is seat leakage. Minimal pressure against the seat. There should be no fuel leaking out. And then the second thing would be opening pressure. This valve has a predetermined pressure at which the fuel pressure will overcome it. That's it. There's nothing more to it. Simple in design, impossible in repair in that there are no parts available. Believe me, I've scoured. We've got some buddies in the industry. Most of them laughed at me when I called them. We have limited options as far as replacing the parts. If, if the nozzles were available, it would literally be as simple as take the nut off, throw that away, pop a new one in, put it back together, there you go. Brand new rebuilt injector. If you saw John's videos, he had some footage where he had the injector lines up out of the head and the injectors were dangling off the lines and he showed some of the spray pattern. Also, when he had these out, there was one clip where he was feeding shop air to the injector and you could see a little bit of seat leakage right around the pintle. These have an opening pressure of about a thousand bar, 1450 PSI, right? So shop air is not going to unseat the valve, but it certainly shouldn't have been leaking when he was doing that. So we've got a few different ideas here. Most extreme is going to be a process that's going to require some machine work, modification, and fitment of a more modern and most importantly available valve. That's kind of plan B. The first plan is to just try and work with what we've got. We actually have in the library a document dated May of 1955, the service instructions for American Bosch ADE type nozzle. Kind of handy to hang on to stuff. We are certainly hoarders. I don't know the last time we've done this procedure, but we have the specific instructions on the reclamation of the valve in this nozzle. That's going to be plan A. In this document, it refers to the inspection prior to the repair attempt. The primary inspection is whether or not the pintle in the end of the injector has worn and sunk down inside the nozzle holder. They're still dirty. We haven't cleaned them. We have just visually inspected each of them. At first glance, none of them have recessed down inside the pintle body. That's a good indication that potentially these are salvageable. Some of the other plans are in this pile of goodies here. This is a modern injector out of the Yanmar and it's relatively close in concept potentially uh, we've looked at it kind of roughly on a bar napkin this could potentially be modified to fit into the hole the valve that we looked at briefly that is currently available we do believe that we could make effectively custom nozzle retaining nut modify this valve to fit in this valve holder opening pressure on this is not at the same specification it would require some modification in that regard and then there is a couple other forward opening nozzles that potentially could enter into the scenario if and when we get there the other potentially long shot, if you watched uh, John's video, he pulled the injectors out when he was trying to scope this engine. He actually pulled, I'm going to say, the back half of the pre-combustion chamber, the component that the injector fits down into. And at first glance, it's roughly the same concept as this injector. This is actually considered a fuel injector, and it also houses the back half of the pre-combustion chamber. 
as well as glow plugs. So this has a glow plug that goes down inside of it. Potentially worst case plan F, we could modify this to fit John's engine. Before we do anything, we're gonna take these back to the pop tester and we're gonna try and get an idea of exactly what we're working with. If we think we've got viable candidates, we'll move over, we'll get them cleaned up, we'll disassemble the valves, we'll go through the lapping process from 1955 and we will see if we can't salvage these injectors. So we're gonna move back to the injector room and see what we're working with and we'll bring you along. All right, so we're back in the injector room. First thing we're gonna do, a couple of these threads are a little boogered. And you can see the top thread is plumb pulled off and the ramp into the next one is kind of chooched up. We're just gonna run a die down over them and chase them, make sure that they're gonna seal up when we put them on the uh, pop testers. And you can see some of that, some of what it cut. We've got injector number one chucked up in the pop tester. We're gonna run it a couple times. Make sure we're bled off. Again, we're looking for 1400, 1450, about a hundred bar, which is, we're short of that, but to be expected. Spray pattern's not too bad. Again, these are not necessarily atomizers per se. It is injecting. It is roughly of the correct opening pressure. We're gonna put a little bit against it, see if we don't get any seat leakage. There it went right there. If you think about that thing in the engine, when the fuel injector pump injects fuel to it, the valve opens and closes the moment that the uh, pressure in the valve overcomes the pressure from the injection pump. So it's gonna hold a small amount of pressure against that valve. It took a while for that to leak past the seat. If you think about it, when it's in the engine, right, the next combustion event is going to be pretty rapid. It's not ideal, but I think that's what we're going to be able to solve with the lapping procedure as long as we don't find another glaring deficiency. That injector, all things considered, in this scenario, in this application, probably never be an issue, but we're going to try and improve it nonetheless. So we'll pop this one out and we'll have a look at number two. All right, number two in the stand. Bleed it off. So the first several strokes wasn't really liking the spray pattern. The last one, if you heard it, we got some chatter and it looked a lot better. Won't go back to the first mode. We're going to open the valve. So that one, the opening pressure is north of 100 bar. So closer to where it should be. It's chattering good now. Uh, but this one would have been probably one of the ones from John's video where the spray pattern was less than desirable. Right there. Got just a little bit of leakage out of that seat. This will be number three going in. Bleed the, bleed the pumper out. Check the opening pressure. We're up there north of 100 bar. It actually looks pretty good. No seat leakage there. Number four. Sounds pretty good, looks pretty good. Getting about 90 bar. So a little, a little low on opening pressure. We'll have to see if we can't whip that back into shape. Seat leakage is none on that one. One of the qualifications to become eligible for this lapping and cleaning is that the nozzle Pintle itself cannot be sunk into the body. Uh, all of these were in good shape in that regard. We're going to clean these up, pop them apart. We're going to get the document from 1955. We're going to follow it as best we can. We're going to lap these components back together, see if we can't improve these injectors. So we're going to move back to the teardown room 
get them cleaned up, and we'll bring you back, let you follow along. Just chuck them in the vise. Lord! Pretty tight. Nozzle nut comes off. That's the valve that we discussed and showed you the parts explosion. This is really the component that we're going to go in after. We're going to get all these taken apart. We'll go back out. We'll clean up that one little spot we couldn't get to on the bench grinder. And then uh, we'll bring these back in. We'll disassemble these valves specifically. And we'll see what we can get into. And you bleed my own blood. All right, I'm going to run these back out to the teardown room. I'm going to buff that last little spot. This is the tip or the nozzle out of the injector. And we're going to try and get these components out of here. It can be a little tedious. There's not exactly a good way to do it. We've got to compress the spring and get the pintle off to the side where it'll pass through the uh, spring retainer. So we're gonna lightly clamp it in a vise. We're gonna work at it with a dental pick. We'll get one of these apart and we'll show you what we're working with. But very light pressure, pretty easily depress the spring by hand. Really need a second pick. Scoot the head of that pintle over. Right there. Nobody move. That's it. That's the pintle out of the nozzle. And we'll lay these other components out so you can now get a better idea of exactly what's going on here. The holder. There's the spring retainer. Should just come right out of there now. And spring. There's one more little dude down in there. Spring seat. So the spring kind of over that so all of this resides on this end the pintle passes through right there and that's what we've got to lap in so that's what they're talking about they don't want the head of the pintle being hammered down into the seat and we are not it's not pitted it's not corroded you can see some varnish it certainly sat for a while We'll take these components, we'll leave them all together, right? We want to make sure we don't get these mixed up. We're going to put these in a sonic cleaner for probably an hour or so, let it do its magic, and then we'll make sure we've got a completely sanitary situation going on. We're going to scatter the rest of them. So that one came out all together. That spring seat on the other one fought us a little bit. So spring seat, spring, spring retainer. You can see the bottom of that kind of discolored probably sat around for many years with nasty old fuel in it. That one also all came out together. Spring seat, spring, and then just the retainer and the pintle and the body. That's it. Looks all right. And that one, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if the difference will be obvious on camera, but this injector does not have the tarnish and corrosion. I shouldn't say corrosion, but stained tarnish. It's interesting. Those components are considerably cleaner. So maybe this thing has been serviced before. Maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe the fuel leaked out of it. Don't know. But that one's in much better condition. These components don't look too bad. So I'm thinking that that plan A hopefully does work out, right? There is a factory authorized cleaning and lapping procedure specifically for this old dog. So maybe we can save them without having to go into uh, modifying and fitting and machine shop and customization. We just as soon leave it in its stock configuration if at all possible. These are actually uh, tea infusers for all you uh, tea drinkers. Pretty handy for sonic cleaner, right? You just open this dude up. If you've got small parts that you don't want to uh, get mixed up, which is very much the situation here, put those down inside there along with the pintle. 
right we don't want these things to get mixed up just going to close those up clamp them down leave all of these things together we'll put this whole tray in the sonic cleaner We've come out of the sonic cleaner. We're just gonna have a peek and look in at our internals. They're cleaner. Let me try and get the pintal out of there. And just, I can barely see it, right? Right there, just barely is something. You can just barely feel it. As far as cleaning though, they're considerably more clean. And maybe that's supposed to be there. I don't. I wouldn't think so. We'll look at some of the others and confirm. Okay, number two. I do not see the little hole we were questioning if it was a feature by design. This one looks really good. I believe this is the one that we had uh, concerns about the delivery. And you can see it just shows kind of staining perhaps and that's what we're going to look to kind of buff off needs polish that one for sure needs a good polish and the last one i believe this is the one that was significantly cleaner than the others and you look at that one and it i'm going to say that at some point this unit was likely replaced we'll get set up for some polish work we'll show you a little bit of that and not much to it really put a little jeweler's rouge or green rouge on them and turn them in their seat kind of just like lapping a valve in a cylinder head from back in the day just on a much smaller scale all right we have thoroughly reviewed the service bulletin from 1955 regarding the service and lapping of these nozzles relatively basic process here certainly not what we had envisioned this video we thought we were going to get into modification machine shop fitment of a more modern style nozzle we still may that would probably make for much better content than than watching us lap a an old nozzle back into sealing. The pintle and seat are kind of down recessed inside of the nozzles. We're going to attempt to put the nozzle back through the body, reach in from the backside with a pin vise after we put some lapping compound on it, hold just a little bit of tension backwards and spin that pintle back into its seat. We're in the office now. We don't usually do any remanufacturing in here, but we wanted somewhere bright and quiet where we could kind of sit down and look at these precision components. We're going to get into it and see what we can do. This is Green Rouge, as we call it. Uh, looks like we've probably also had this since about 1955. Got a couple of different grits back there, but the experts prescribe the green for this adventure. So we're going to take just a little bitty bit, and we're looking to lap this surface back here is what we're after. Okay, we've got it back in its home. And we're going to take the pin vise, try to keep from bending it, just pop that over the very end, and then we're just going to hold tension against the seat. The uh, service manual says to lap for precisely one minute. So we're going to spin this on its seat. We're just holding light pressure on it. Trying to be careful not to bend this pintle because if this thing bends, we're in a we're in a bind. There are no more parts out there as we've already discussed. It's working. Believe it or not, and I don't know if we'll ever be able to demonstrate it on camera, but it absolutely cleaned and polished that seat. And you can see after lapping specifically where it's seating. The hard thing to see is the seat down in the holder, but I can see a ring of contact in there as well. Kind of like when you lap a valve, you kind of pull it back out and look to see what you've done. And I can see that, that it is shining up that seat. We're going to give it a little more. This is not really something we do much of at Area Diesel Service. I don't want this to come across as your nozzle remanufacturing solution provider. What we do here is uh, 
try and take care of folks, and that's what we're doing today. If we have the uh, capability to help somebody, then by golly, that's what we're going to try to do. I don't know that we're going to get into the 1010 injector nozzle restoration business on a grand scale, but uh, we are here to try and help wherever we can. That is, uh, right, services in our name. That is what we do. Undeniably has improved the ceiling seat. It actually says in this old document, lap it for a minute, put it all back together, check it on the pop tester. If you don't like the results, you can try to lap it a second time. And if that doesn't work, nozzle replacement is required. Unfortunately, that's not an option. And we're just going to have to kind of go by what we're seeing here. But I'm going to call that one good. And we're going to move on. So we may not punish you with sitting through the lapping of all four of these. If we find something uh, noteworthy throughout the process, we'll bring you back. We are going to make sure that we clean these thoroughly before we reassemble. You know, it's almost like it, it really just needs clean. This may be considered a, a cleaning process as much as it is a lapping. This is the pintle that it's got one little dot, and I can, I can feel it. I don't know what it is. We may just barely hit that, but again, the ceiling surface is back here. If you see, that kind of looks on the other side of the, on the far side of the screwdriver, kind of looks like an engine valve, right? And that's exactly the seat. And once it lifts it off the seat, this is really just what develops the spray pattern. So that little bitty, I can't tell if it's a hole or what that is, but we'll try and clean that off as well. This one, you can see there are more rings around the spraying portion of the pintle. This one is, of all of them, this one's probably the worst. We'll see what we can do with it. They don't leak. The spray pattern is reasonable. The opening pressure is remotely correct. The uh, level of tolerance here is going to be probably greater than we would normally like to operate within just based on the availability, right? And with this being a indirect or a pre-combustion engine spray pattern, it, maybe it doesn't have to be just exactly perfect. We certainly shoot for perfect, but if you've watched any of John's videos, um, I think this whole machine has a long way to go before it's perfect, but perfect is the goal as per usual. On more modern injectors, there is a, you know, new assembled specification, right? It might be 1500 PSI is the opening pressure specification. And that's what you should hit on a freshly remanufactured or brand new assembled injector. But on a lot of the newer stuff, there's also a service specification so if it's been in the field for a thousand hours it's not still new it may not be still at the factory specification doesn't mean it's bad we get into that a lot with common rail injectors right the tolerance for a freshly remanufactured or brand new injector is tight and that is the test plan so when a customer sends in a set of injectors and you run them on the equipment against the test plan for a freshly rebuilt injector a lot of times it'll fail but maybe it failed by one percent so is that truly a failure or is that a service level accepted you know it's got 50,000 miles on it it's not going to be within the tight tolerances so there's a given level of gray area open to interpretation you're not going to pick up one percent deviation in maximum fuel delivery but you know if it's 50% obviously that's failed a lot of gray area there we've actually written some different test plans for injectors from the field open to interpretation. I don't know if this spring retainer, it certainly looks to be ambidextrous. They made note in that bulletin to make sure you install it in this orientation, but the picture does nothing to demonstrate what that orientation is. So we're going to mark them the way that they came apart up here where we can see that before we get back into uh, assembly how these things kind of go together these are forward protruding nozzles so the pintle goes in from the outside this spring seat goes up under the spring 
drops down over the pintle and then this retainer kind of acts as a pocket for the top end of the spring and then you have to get the pintle over into one of these so compress the spring seat compress the spring get the pintle through one of these larger holes and then center it up in the center which will retain it the hard part is you've got to let the pintle come out a little bit so it can cock over and, and reach those larger holes. Back in the injector room, we're going to try and get these put back together. And this is going to be one of those things where I need about four hands. We've got to hold the pintle in the bottom. and put the spring seat back on in the proper orientation. Get the dental pick. We've got to compress that to the point where it pushes the pintle out. And we've got to get the pintle to kick over to the side. Oh God. That's how you destroy them right there. It was a special tool cited in the bulletin from 1955 which we probably had at one point, but we sure can't find it today. It's really wasn't much to speak of. It was just a little fixture plate to allow the nozzle to come out a little bit. Success. Now it is retained, lapped, and reassembled. And again, there's not much to them. This is just a blank barrel, just a straight shot through and a nut to retain it. No seals, no seals to blow, because if there were, we'd be blowing them. There's one, and that particular one was the uh, unit we're going to call most suspect. Showed the worst signs of wear. It says in the bulletin not to ever shim these. But that one's got a little shim on it. Maybe that was factory. Maybe somebody's been here before us. Put it back like we found it. Struggle bus just left. We got all these back together. We actually had to have two guys on it. Put it in the vise. Get everything lined up. One guy holding down the spring retainer, aligning the pintle with the larger hole off to the side, and another guy in the bottom pushing the pintle up. There was some colorful language, but nothing was hurt. Reassembled the nozzle itself, put them back in the injectors. We're getting ready to put them back in this fixture. We're going to start with what was the problem child. All right, we've got number one chucked up in here. Close the valve. We're going to bleed her off. I'm going to give this one some extra. This was the problem child. We'll make sure anything that was in there is flushed out. Right now, the spray pattern looks fantastic. We're going to open the valve. We're just short of 100 bar, which is spec. Given the circumstances, we're calling that good. We're going to give her the leak test here. Fantastic. She's dry. So, number one. The one that we thought we may have the most trouble with. Looks great. And bleed her out. Okay. Opening pressure. Right where it should be. 100 bar. Spray pattern's pretty good. See if she's leaking. Nothing. Fantastic. 
Two down, two to go. Number three, bleeder out. Check the pressure. It's a little high, but we'll take that. We're up over 100, 100 bar, 1450 PSI. We're going to check it for a leak. Okay, it's good. All right, one to go. Give us a little prayer here. Okay, bleeder out. Opening pressure. About, about 900, so it's a little low, but again, all things considered, we're going to take it. Not that critical on this old dog. Seat leakage, none. So, fantastic. Four successful lap jobs. Calibration fluid on them. Keep them from rusting on the ride home. Then we'll dig up some protective caps here. That's it for back here. We'll clean our mess up. We'll meet you at the parts counter. Put new chamber gaskets on each of them. Ready to go. Probably not the most fascinating repair that we've done at Area Diesel Service. Not one that we do um, regular. I can't say I've ever seen anybody sit down and lap the pentels in a set of AMBAC 1010 nozzles from 1960. But it demonstrates to the extent at which we will travel for our customers. No stone unturned. We'll do what we can do to help. I'm not sure there are any other solutions out there for these, short of which uh, was plan B, C, and D, right? Machine these to fit a more modern nozzle. At this point, I'm comfortable and confident in what we have come up with here, right? Completely cleaned up thoroughly inspected under the magnifying glass and lap these things back to fit. I don't know the extreme to which John will go with this restoration. If it's just going to be see if he can make it work and, and move on or if this thing's going to continue to escalate into a full-blown frame off type deal. Don't know. I know he's in the bowels deep as we speak. We're excited to see what he comes up with there. Please give us a subscription. Stick around. We've got some interesting things to come. In the meantime, if you need anything potentially from the modern era, again, this is uh, about as old school as it gets. We are doing remanufacturing on modern current fuel systems, common rail and uh, pumps and injectors from the modern era. And maybe someday somebody out there in the YouTube world will need our services with something in that regard. If you need something, fuel injectors, fuel injection pumps, turbochargers, any type of diesel engine related component, please don't hesitate to reach out and give us an opportunity to earn your business. You can call us at 800-637-2658. You can drop us an email at parts at areadiesel.com. You can log on to our website at areadieselservice.com where you'll have the ability to chat instantly with a diesel engine expert through the button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen or you can stop by any of our locations in Iowa, Illinois or Indiana. If you didn't come to us from Farmcraft channel, please go over there, check him out. He's always blowing seals on his channel and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.